Okay, we're going to be looking at what cells are actually like. So what are cells? We've learned from the cell theory that um, in order for things to be considered alive, they have to show all six characteristics of life. And we learn about many of those things. And one of the first ones is that they are made up of cells. So, And we also talked about uh, the first drawings of cells that existed. Now, if we look at all the cells that actually exist, so here's just a sampling of a few pictures here. And if I just look at all these different types of cells, some of them I can see, I can already recognize are bacteria cells. Some are uh, human cells. These look like they're cheek cells. These ones look like bacteria cells. If you look at all these different ones, also bacteria cells, I can tell by their shape and the way that they're dividing as well too. More bacteria. This is maybe something like a euglena, which is a type of protist. This is a nerve cell, and we have plant cells. I can tell these are plant cells because of the regular structure and the kind of uh, solid cell wall that makes these look very, very rigid. It looks like a plant cell. These are blood cells, which are very, very tiny. They're kind of special because they're missing something. And another really scary-looking bacteria cell with all these tail-like things. These are called flagella. We're going to see that a little bit later. Um, in general, you should be thinking about cells as the basic functional units. So a little cell is going to contain everything that is necessary in order for something to be alive. So if I take a look and I compare this diagram with this diagram here, I'm going to show you what generalized animal cells look like, which include humans and slugs. I like to use slugs as an example all the time. Um, we're going to point out a few of these things in a second. Plant cells are a little bit different, and if you go back, go back in the video and take a look at some of the pictures that you saw earlier, you can probably tell by using these diagrams which ones were animal cells and which ones were plant cells. So let's talk about a few of these things that are labeled here. Um, and then in the next slide, I'll go through each of the functions. But uh, what you should do is think about drawing these and when you draw them you need a few hints for yourself so I put down here to think like a breakfast plate so I can see this kind of looks like a an egg in the middle here you got some pepper these are little sausages with some ketchup on the top and you have slices of bacon here um, and this could be the plate what are these I don't know little beans because you eat beans for breakfast well you should because they're good for you so a few things. The cell outer lining here is called the cell membrane. This is actually very, very detailed, but if I draw a simple picture, it's usually just a line that's, that surrounds the entire thing. The cell membrane is going to be important. We'll come and we'll talk about the functions a little bit later. Uh, all the space inside here that you are not labeling specifically should be should be called the. It's kind of like the the jelly of the cell, which makes it sound really boring, but actually a lot of important chemical reactions happen in there, so you should write that down. And that area is called the cytoplasm. Plasm kind of sounds like jelly. Cyto is a fancy way to say cell. And then right in the middle is something called the nucleus. We'll talk a lot about the nucleus later, but for now, all the genetic information, the DNA, is actually stored inside the nucleus. So uh, over here, let's look at plant cells. So plant cells, I can see a lot of the same things. And use the color here. Now, if you're doing a, looking at a diagram, on a test, you won't have a color printout, so you have to use these shapes, like the little mini sausages with ketchup, like the uh, little egg in the middle. So don't worry, don't think about the colors so much. This is just a, a colored diagram, but don't worry about it. Plant cells are special because they have an additional outer layer here, which makes the plants cells a little bit more rigid and this outer layer is called the cell wall but the cell membrane is still inside so this line here is the cell membrane and this thicker area on the outside would be called the cell wall uh, we still see the nucleus okay plant cells still have a nucleus that have all the dna in their instructions for the cell plant cell has another special thing called a central vacuole central vacuole we'll talk about that later and plant cells also have a special structure here. These look more like the large green peas, but remember, you're not going to see color on any other kind of diagram. So just try to think about how you can remember the difference between a lot of these things. And then uh, over here, these things are called chloroplasts. This is what makes a plant green and what allows a plant to make its own food or create its own energy using converting light energy from the sun. So when you see leaves, leaves look green because those 
plant cells have a lot of these things in here called chloroplasts. So this color is pretty accurate. Okay, this is what makes plants look green. There's also the jelly here, the space in between. Remember, don't focus on the colors. And these little sausage things, sausage things with ketchup. We'll practice drawing these in class and doing various activities. These are called mitochondria. That's a lot of syllables, mitochondria. Mitochondria are the things, these are called uh, little organelles. They are, they are parts of the cell that help to produce, produce energy, to produce energy. Okay, and so they're producing energy using uh, actually glucose using some sugar, so make sure you understand that. That may raise some questions for the plant cell, okay? So we said the chloroplasts are helping us to create food using light energy, but then these mitochondria can also use that food to actually make more energy for themselves. Okay, next, uh, these small little things, this arrow is poorly labeled. It looks like it's touching the cell membrane. I'm sorry, you need to stretch this over to here, and these little things are called lysosomes, lysosomes. Now, let us take a look at one more thing, which is these slabs of bacon. We're going to call it Golgi complex. There's a lot of things in here, which is why we're going to do various activities to help us understand what all these things do. But um, one more tiny thing, the little pepper things here are called ribosomes, and you'll see there are actually ribosomes over here as well. Okay, there would be Golgi complex in the plant cells as well too, if you want to make a note of that. And lysosomes, these are arguably uh, more present in animal cells than in plant, plant cells. If you, if you take a look at various resources online, you'll find that that's the case. So really quickly, uh, just make a note of all these different terms and uh, you should be able to sketch those diagrams that you just saw. Don't worry about adding color, but worry about, think about the shapes and the sizes of the various things. So what are some of these things and what do they do? The cell membrane controls what goes into and can leave the cell, so it's kind of like a gatekeeper. The cell wall and plants provide extra support for the cell. The central vacuole, the big uh, space in the middle of the plant cells, act as a storage space for water and nutrients. The nucleus for both types of cells contain the genetic material, and you've probably heard of DNA. It's what makes us who we are and what makes all living things what they are. The instructions are there. The chloroplast, can we find these in plant cells? Nope. Actually, yes. Sorry. I, my question was, can we find these in animal cells? And the answer is no. If we could, then I for example, might be green, like the Incredible Hulk. And if I was green, I'd be able to go to the beach and soak up all the sun's energy and actually create my own food. I wouldn't have to ever go out to eat again. Life would be very boring for me if that was the case. But plant cells do have chloroplasts, which makes them green, and they use the sun's energy to make food. That fancy food is glucose, which is what we call uh, our main sugar. Mitochondria produce energy for the cell, but they use this glucose. So we can do that, but I have to actually eat the glucose. Plants can use this as well, using the glucose that they've made by themselves. Lysosome is like the uh, garbage men. They break down unwanted uh, waste material. Ribosome produce proteins, and these proteins have specific jobs inside the cell. More on that later. The Golgi complex transports materials in tiny little packages called vesicles. I haven't written that here, but uh, the Golgi complex, I, I know because I remember what a breakfast plate looks like. These guys look like the little bacon slices. And finally, the cytoplasm is the jelly that fills up the space in the cell, but uh, it's not technically jelly, but it's where a lot of chemical reactions happen. So that's a big list of all the things. So make sure you can go back and pause the video and then write down the various things here. Um, there's a lot of new vocabulary. This would be a perfect place to actually use Quizlet or something like that to uh, write down a few of these definitions. But if you're going to make flashcards, I would say these definitions are not enough. You should also write down what they look like. So as many different things that you can think of, even if it's not a scientific definition, something that will help you remember some of these terms. So there are all the different parts of the cell. These are some basic diagrams. You should be able to sketch these diagrams, sketch these diagrams, focus on their shapes, not the colors, please. And go back and test yourself by looking at a blank diagram and then trying to label as many of these things as you can. Alrighty.